All right. Well, we know he's, Tiffin. At, he's at the Pasha address. I know Tiffin. Mm -hmm. Who's Tiffin? He's, he's a the bartender. Yeah, he's very kind. He's mm. very nice. Um, he's well, the Dragonborn bartender. Tiffin Grayscale. I'm really Nick. sorry about your shipment, and we're going to try our best to figure out what happened because it's, I understand that's a big deal. Frost we'll, Elm is. Um, well, I felt very fortunate that I could even get some. Mm -hmm. um, it comes from far to the north, and uh, there's apparently some more other difficulties in that direction as well. So uh, the fact that it even came down from Elm and beyond, uh, well, and I had a commission in, uh, in Oak that would have made this uh, a very big boon. So... Uh, without it, I'm actually uh, in a very poor place. So, does Frost Elm have any like magical properties, or is it just like a very high quality wood? Do you know? Uh, my understand. My understanding is that it uh, it is uh, very effective um, against cold, and that um, you can either. F my commission is to fashion some uh, variety of wooden shields and armor pieces uh, that might be uh, as a, a test of some kind and then also uh, just making boards. It takes a certain amount of skill and my reputation apparently to uh, my patron in Oak is uh, that I would do well with it um, and then uh, uh, to be very honest, uh, I think that maybe working it here in Ginnon, where it's more out of the way, is more advantageous to someone working it in Oak, where it might be in the city of Oak, where it might be more conspicuous. So um, I think that is also part of, I'm not, not so vain to think that my skill alone is what has uh, uh, caught the attention of my patron. Right. That makes sense. Well, well, we'll go talk to uh, to Orpez and Tiffin and see what we can find out for you. Thank you. I don't want to be difficult. I'm just uh, trying to be the voice of people here. We understand. Thank you for being reasonable. Mm -hmm. And that wood outside that their homes are made of, well, you can guess where that came from. Have you seen it? Well, we didn't build it, but the wood. <laughs> right, D did you see the wood? No, he's saying he gave them wood to build homes out of. Uh... <laughs> he just kind of looks at you. Uh, As... what... How, um... Yeah, he has been eyeing you, Julius, quite a bit. <laughs> like, <laughs> How can I build out of you? No, he's not. That's, no, he's, he's just curious. Just I know. <laughs> what? I'm making a really bad joke. No, yeah, yeah. please. No. Mm, if I carve a bit off of you, is it, is it your skin or is it wood? <laughs> um, this got to a dark place. Yeah. Can, can you uh, please... Uh, Put a little bit more description in the place, like more, like they're ch they're cutting wood. It's a, a like I Carmichael have worked at a cabinet factory, so I can imagine some modern version of this. Um, yeah, it's um, how much lumber uh, is going around here? Um, he's got like basically like there's like a an enclo like a house, um, and. Uh, that's a couple stories tall. That's the shop, and then they probably live above it. Um, stone, like 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 the rest of of Genin. But then next to it, he's got uh, it's like a covered area where he works. So it's open air. Um, that looks like it has some uh, like probably movable walls for if a storm comes, so he can close it up. But he mostly keeps it open to the air. Um, and there's a variety of benches and workspaces. There's uh, like a rack of tools and saws. There's lots of knives. There's a place to sit. And then there's a variety of wood, both like in the behind the building, you can see like trees that have been felled that haven't been planed or anything. And then there's 
smaller cut pieces of lumber, there's larger lumber. Um, he mostly seems like he makes uh, cabin tree, cabin tree, is that right? right, right, right? Cabinet tree? Cabinetry. Cabinetry. Yeah. He seems to yeah. be a cabinet maker mostly, but then there's also um, general woodworking because he's the the only one around here. Um, so there's looks like his son's working, been working on fencing, like fence posts, and that kind of thing. Um, there's small wooden crafts and that kind of stuff too that have a variety of skill. Like it seems like he's kind of a universalist, generalist, but that he you see cabinet pieces for the most part where do you get uh most of your lumber oh we um we we there's plenty that's uh locally sourced and then um uh if it's something more fancy that comes in for a particular um uh we've got we've got pieces that have come up from the sea that have aged and changed that people want things made of. We've got uh, uh, standard just pine that makes its way here. But yeah, it's um, a tree is a tree, as you, you know, and then um, people like different characteristics of, of wood. And so uh, uh, elm or oak have different functions and some people like the the looks when they're stained are uh, some shape better than others. Some are more pliable, some are stronger, but maybe uh, easier, more brittle. It's just, uh, it's wood. It comes from the ground, I guess. Hey, okay, come from let's... <laughs> uh, I don't think, I don't think it's ever been a, a person, if that's what you're asking. I think it's all just been Trees. Well, tree. Trees do have their ways as well. I I think I understand what you mean. Well, uh, continue on your work, I suppose, That's and I'll good. wander off. Hmm. And do we? Go ahead. Do we know where the uh yeah, what did you call it? The, the House of Light where, and Dark. Yes. That Yeah, the uh <laughs> the uh like religious Wouldn't... centers of Ginnon are are near the town square. Okay. Um, so house... we would have like probably seen it. Yeah, the, the House of Light Light and Dark is distinct in that it is a round building. It's perfectly circular. Mm -hmm. um, and it has uh, like glass windows or like obsidian windows all the way around it. Like it, uh, it is round with a, a like a, the roof comes to a point. It's perfectly round, and then it has like the walls are round too, but they're made of some kind of glass. So round, like kind of like a cylinder, or round like a sphere. Um cylindrical because it's a, still a building right but yeah yeah okay a circle the, the the foundation of it is a circle and the roof is a circle that comes up to a point point so like a silo yeah yeah but but but, but only like squatty squatty it's silo it's squatty a cone, silo. On, cone on top of a cylinder it's a yurt <laughs> it's a yurt yeah it's like a it's yurt. a yurt shape okay yeah like yeah. a big yurt got it's it very much like a yurt but cool but uh big perfect. and big right yeah. and stone got mm -hmm. it Stone yurt. Stone shape. yurt. Great. Understood. Allie. Um, okay, so I just want to clarify something real quick. Uh, Kieran Deeproot, is he the king? He's the king of spring? He's, He's the, the prince, the, prince and oak. Prin the prince and oak. Prince of oak. Okay. And then. Prince and in, oak. And oak. Okay. And then what is it he, he wanted to take over some of the kingdoms? He wants to uh, essentially oak and elm and uh these other country little countries are part of a greater country that's mm -hmm. that uh spring is the capital of and spring is on its own little island mm -hmm. it's the zarkin kingdoms and uh and so 
Kieran Deeproot is like Prince of Oak. So each each little country has is a prince dumb and has a prince that's in charge. He wants to break away from spring and be and have Oak be its own nation. And there's a lot of support for this. And like the uh, British Commonwealth. Right, right. Got and it. So, Deldrin We've been watching Lightseer. a lot of Crown. Sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Deldrin Lightseer is the king in spring, and mm -hmm. and he's an elf. And then, uh, yeah. So there's. So would. And, but he hasn't been like it used to be that the monarch in spring would come uh, over the channel and and visit and and be a king around and people were really happy about it. Uh, so they broke off from. There's older history where. The Zarkin kingdoms broke off from uh, Palach, because Palach used to be in charge of everything, and then it, you know all sorts of things happened. Uh, so, so would you uh, consider spring to be like north, or would that be more like northeast? It's northeast. So the wood it's on its own from... island out there in the Mary Sea. Okay, so when you say like the wood came from the north, it would be coming more towards from Elm. More, yeah, more elm ice wastes, uh, northern elm where trees still grow because nothing really grows in the ice wastes. Yeah, okay. that's where the frost elm. You you might be familiar with frost elm, uh -huh. um, though I'm it would have been further further north in the in yeah. the in the nation of elm <laughs> in the yeah, prince dome of elm. <laughs> okay, um, so when we're like further away from him, mm -hmm. um, Ash, are we moving? We we're moving. We're going. Bye. Yeah. Bye, Zeb. We're going to the house. Of light and yeah. dark. Okay, great. Yeah, I just want to ask Ash a question, like, away from him. Sure. Um, how much do you know about, like, politics drama that's that's going on right now with Kieran Davenport and trying to take Davenport. over, like... Deep root. So, Deep root. Deep root, sorry. <laughs> Davenport. Davenport. He's, he's, he's just, an I East Coast. I know exactly what my nowhere. brain did. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, with... Say hi to your mother for me. It's on the dab. Get the drink off the Davenport. No, that's the Schiffer robe. Uh. Um, with uh, with Karen Deeproot. I mean, because they said he said he wanted the the uh, the Frost Elm to make shields. Do you think maybe someone might have tried to take the mm -hmm. wood so they could make shields instead? That they don't <clears> want to be a part of the war or to one up. Well, that makes sense, but it doesn't. So. What you're essentially saying is someone from Spring would have stolen the uh, the wood that was meant to be used in oak. Yeah, like maybe they knew it was coming from the north, so they traveled over there and they took it. Maybe. Just, yeah. Yeah. I mean. Uh, it's. Uh, <laughs> As, aside from it just being valuable wood, I think that makes sense that whoever intercepted the shipment probably knew about the shield and armor commission and um, is on the other side of it. That would make sense. Yeah, I was kind of going to agree that it could be that. It could also just be that it's difficult wood to get and it is expensive and it could just be that it's valuable so maybe they maybe it is someone trying to like i don't know sell it on the black market does that exist i don't know yeah. and the hall yeah it does. Is, i can confirm I, it does <laughs> okay and and i think the do we want to believe the pirate <laughs> <laughs> Too soon, Ash, too soon. When it comes to clandestine dealings, yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, should but a person the who one knows... who isn't truthful about his history with his family? Well, I was and... being sarcastic with Chandri, she understands. So was but, I, but sarcastic. But it's not right now, Julius. Um, <laughs> but Chandri, I, I do think Ash kind of has a point in the sense of, you might be our, our biggest um, factor in that if there were goblins, that were part of this raid, that they just did it for survival or something. It has nothing to do with their race. And I mean, you you chose to be a pirate and did lots of things and you're a good person now, so. Yeah, yeah I mean, I guess there right. is always the option that it, 
goblins could have been involved. Um, I don't know. Everyone has to um, do stuff to survive. It doesn't. Matter. I want to know. I want to know who Tiffin's source was. True. Or if he's just speculating. I'm just saying. We can go ask him. Yeah, I'm just saying a lot of them are homeless right now, so you might do something just so you can eat. Right. Yeah, but I think the idea is, well, I guess if they were, got a cut from it, they didn't rob the shipment themselves, the people that are outside the wall right now. Because you bring up a good point. Well, yeah, Chandri, that's a good point. But Mars, that's, you know these people would have had to know enough information to know when and where the shipment was coming and then be able to transport all that wood to somewhere and then sell it. Like, yeah, that seems to require a most, lot of planning. Yeah, I mean, this is reaching, but I think if goblins were involved, it was simply because they needed to earn a, a silver to eat. And so they just did it, but they didn't have ill intentions upon it. Sure, but I'm going to go ahead and say this feels like organized crime, okay. especially you with the note that was left. Yeah, like if if somebody just happened to see a valuable wagon coming down the road and they're opportunists, that's one thing, but this doesn't feel like that. It feels like it was organized and planned. And it was a hit. So mm-hmm. I don't think that some homeless goblins who are down on their luck are going to be in cahoots with whatever organization planned this. Because wouldn't it, if it was just a robbery, like, like you said, like opportunist, then there would be, there would probably still be someone left to either make it to Genin or make it somewhere to send word that, hey, we were robbed and it was these yeah. guys. It's a good mm-hmm. point. Well, but should we... There's nothing... That seems more sinister than just you... stick them up. We're gonna <laughs> steal your stuff. Yeah. Um. Well, do you want to talk to Zeb or sorry, not Zeb. Uh, Olpez or Tiffin first. Olpez. Olpez. Let's yeah. Let's go see what Olpez's deal is. Okay. And then we'll go talk to Tiffin and see if we can sort out the shipment mystery. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, Quick you make your way down to the House of Light and Dark. Uh, um, Jared, yes. Super quick question. Uh, on the way there, are there any signs of like parks? Yeah, Dirt? there's um, there there <laughs> is there are trees. It's kind of like New York City, you know, where there's trees on the on the okay. walkway. So like. Every now and then there's trees. People have like planters. There is green space. Um, it's all. It all feels very specific. Like it's designed. This whole place is designed. Like they, they when they built it, they built every road and everything was built kind of all at once. Okay. With, Thank with you. purpose. But yeah, there there is green space. There's gardens. People have little yards uh, and that kind of thing. Uh, it's not just stone. There's a cafe. There's a black box theater. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, little, I think I, <laughs> there's a coffee roaster. Yeah, exist. yeah, yeah. It's it's actually like really attractive for young couples. Uh, you know. <laughs> Open mic improv on Sunday nights. Mm-hmm. There's a brewery just up the way. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, yeah, you you make your way to the the house of light and dark. So everybody, uh, there is an. Uh, entryway um there are several but uh uh do you go in yes okay so make perception check sixteen dirty twenty nice five five no six (laughs) eighteen eighteen all right twenty six eighteen dirty twenty uh the ceiling of the House of Light and Dark is uh, it's all the constellations. So it's kind of mm. like Grand Central Terminal, but actually like proper. And uh, I guess with 26, who had the 26? Julius. Julius. The 22. Julius? Yeah, that makes, makes 22. sense. Uh, 22. 22. 
But the 22, Julius, particularly because you're used to being outside, this is tonight's. This is what tonight's sky is going to look like because you're aware of how it changes. Uh, and you're like, oh, that looks just like kind of how it was last night and how it's probably going to look tonight. Um, hmm. And then there's uh, along the windows, you do see there's like the everybody else can notice this too. Well, maybe not Chandra with the five, but like the <laughs> uh, the above the windows are uh, icons of the moon and like the moon station, kind of like how it's going to look. However, it's not broken; it is whole. So unlike uh, most times when you see the moon, it's got a chunk and a bunch of stuff coming off it. But this depiction, you can tell it's the, the way the moon changes as it, as the month goes along, but it's a singular piece. So that's kind of strange. Um, and then the way the sun is coming in, there's like this obsidian glass that's making it pleasant, but still quite bright coming in. So like, it seems when you're looking around, especially those of you who have the higher uh, perceptions, is that this is building is designed to let light in no matter what time of day and no matter what time of year. And also in that design of it seems to be bringing in, it has some kind of function, spiritual or technical for when the sun is here, we know exactly what time it is if the moon is here, we know exactly what day it is. Uh, we know our position. Like there's a lot of information that can be gleamed by just the light and by just the sky while you're in this building. Yes. Um, can I roll a religion check just to see like, cause um, I'm proficient in religion. So I'm just curious if Marza would know anything about this religion. Sure. Okay. Uh, 24. Yeah. So as you notice, with the way the light works and with the size of this building, with the light coming in one side, one side is quite bright, and then it gets kind of shadowy on, one, on, on the middle, and then the opposite side, because of how big the building is, it is quite dark. But since you're into the season, you're starting to get into the season of light, there is more light in this room than darkness. And you can put together that in the middle of the season of dark, uh, that it would be more dark inside. And then during shadow uh, waning, which you're in now, you're at the end of now, the light is coming more into the building. And then during shadow waxing, the light uh, leaves the building. And this is a physical representation for worshiping of Father Light, Mother Dark, and the Twins of Shadow that the House of Light and Dark is a worship center for those gods that have all kind of collapsed into a singular place. So instead of them each having their own uh, temple, it's just one, but it does represent all of them. Okay, that's cool. Mm -hmm. um, Chandri. Yeah. Do you, you, you worship the, the, the Twins of Shadows, don't you? Nope. Uh, <laughs> I think you're um, someone else. Oh, no. What I I'm worship is, is she's player knowledge. I know that she saw them while she was praying, but she didn't know. Was that she, she is a half elf of shadow elves. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, no common misconception. Um, I uh, have a relationship with Melora, but not with any of the old LV religions. It's, it's interesting that this house represents all of them. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I haven't spent much time in places of worship in my life, but um, yeah, it is interesting that they're all kind of convening. Sorry, my earpiece fell out. It's fine. <laughs> Um, yeah, so, and, uh, uh, as you all are kind of taking in this space, it's very different. It's very open. There, there are small pillars that are holding up the ceiling, but the way they're placed is to not like 
block view of pretty much anything. Like there's really nowhere to hide in here. Um, like it's meant to be unobtrusive as possible to let as much light move through. So however it's designed, these like randomly placed pillars of stone that hold the ceiling up. Um, it doesn't seem like they should be able to hold a ceiling this large with how small they are, one. <laughs> but uh, they are, it's hard to hide in here. So there is, as you walk in, there is a, uh, a individual, he's wearing uh, a fairly simple like robes of, of gray, light and uh, gray, white and black. And uh, he has a shaved head and he's just sweeping. He seems to be human. Um, he's sweeping the floor and he looks up and says, oh, um, haven't had, uh, wasn't expecting anyone today. Uh, uh, welcome to the House of Light and Dark. How can, uh, how can we help you? Well, thank uh, you you're muted, for yeah. having us. Hello. I was muted. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, we heard that there's a bits of drama going on with the goblin situation. Indeed. And, uh, how are you feeling about it? We're looking for Brother Olpez. Oh, I, I am he, the uh, the only one. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, well, uh, I'm, uh, I spent a lot of time in meditation over it. I haven't um, felt a strong pull one way or the other. Uh, I'm kind of unsure, not that um, they're unwelcome, but there's uh, the things move oddly about them. Uh, I don't know how to explain that. I'm sorry. Um, uh, maybe if you could ask me a more specific question, I'm, I don't know. Well, uh, we had, oh, go ahead, Chandri. Oh, no, you go. Uh, 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 well, we had kind of our own encounter with the Lord and the Lady. Oh, um, yes, I'm, uh, aware of that. It's like, uh, like someone putting bitter root in your tea, if well, that makes sense. Yeah, she didn't enchant any of us, fortunately, but she did Good. enchant an entire town of many different races and people. That was the happening out west, was it not? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm. I've uh, felt felt that. Um, I guess uh, the intrepid heroes of Ginnon are those I can thank for uh, bringing back or taking away the heat, as it were. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we'll ever have that cold again, but uh, things are not unbalanced. Or they're more balanced than they were. Perhaps that's more accurate, yes. Speaking of balance, hmm. we ran into a dragon that was trapped in a sphere. Oh my. <laughs> um, and what did, was it a friendly dragon or an unfriendly dragon or? To be let, determined. Well, yes, let us say that it's unclear, but we, I, at least myself, I can say that I feel that its intentions are not good. Well, that's um, very unfortunate. I, I was going to say, speaking of balance, does the phrase scales the balance mean anything to you? Hmm. Unfortunately, no. Um, we forgot to ask Zeb about that. Uh, I'm always interested in um, the play between things. Um, seems to be uh, part of what uh, this place is about, if you, as it were. 
Um, mm-hmm. But no, um, the yeah the the world is in uh, things are very strange, of course. Um, but uh, no, things also move oddly about uh, something with those goblins. I uh, haven't um, found the courage to go and investigate further, unfortunately. Annette. There's something. I don't know. You know them? We know a couple of them. Meshach is a sort of spiritual leader for them. I feel like, Mm. you know, her ways might be different than yours, but she serves a similar function for her people as you do for yours. And she seems well-intentioned. Yeah, she very much sensed uh, what was going on with the Lord and the Lady and knew that it wasn't good, and she was very helpful to us on our on our quest. And she's just trying to protect her peoples. Plus, having someone who's that sensitive to, you know, the movements of the Earth would be an asset to the city. Like, I think you would all benefit from letting her and her people inside. She Maybe you could go that. talk to her and she could clear up what the weird feeling you have is. I have been talking with our gardener friend about such things, too. Hmm. Oh. Gardener friend. The tranquil. Hmm. Oh, right. Well, there's one here, too? Yes. That, that yeah, are, his name is Lawson. Uh, oh, that's right, Lawson. <laughs> Oh, this is... Olsen Twain. Olsen Twain. Uh, Twain. Twain. Olsen Twain. Mr. Twain. Um, Mr. Twain. Hey, it's fine. <laughs> uh, it's he, he, he He see him kind of look at the ceiling and he's like looking at where the light falls into the floor. Curious. Can I look at what he's looking at and see if I know what it is? Yeah, you sure can. Uh, what do you know about <laughs> astronomy? <laughs> I would know celestial navigation. You would. Uh, make well, an investigation check, Chandri. What you got for me, Tazu? Uh, that's a oh. big old three. I rolled Man, a three too, uh, no, but that's a total of five. Ch- Chandri, <laughs> since you have astral navigation because of being on the sea, I'll let you roll that with advantage. What you got for me, right. Julius? That's got a one. one. Yeah, I don't want to roll. Th- this is a, a uh, twelve uh, for me. <laughs> yeah, th- this uh, building being a like mortal creation and not like grown out of the ground, it's a little bit beyond you right now. Uh, you know that that's, the, that's tonight's sky, and you can see where he's looking, where the light is coming through and intersecting. Chandri, uh, you notice that um, where he's looking seems to be where light and dark most converge on the ceiling, and the uh, uh, constellation happens to be one that's a tree. Um, it represents, it's usually like kind of like a Yadrasil thing. It's like a tree of the world type of constellation of like natural phenomenon and like druidic uh, representation in the sky. Um, mm-hmm. But so, but it's, it's a tree, at least if you draw it as one, it's a constellation, but, yeah. but you know that, that that's the like tree constellation. Uh huh. And so he's looking at that and then he's looking at Julius. <laughs> Well, perhaps uh, if you know them, you can take me to them and I can find bravery in your company. I don't often leave uh, even this space, as it were. 
We would love to take you to Nisha. Very good. Let's, um, I think uh, we should waste no time. Great. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. go. All right. So as you, as you guys exit, like he gets toward the door, like a, you, like the exit, one of the exit portals, and he kind of like has his feet on the edge of the stone. And it's kind of like touching the frame and looking out with some hesitancy. Julius will extend their hand. All right, so he looks at that and he kind of looks back toward the ceiling and just reaches out and takes your hand, Julius, and steps out onto the ground. Takes a deep breath and then he doesn't let go of you, Julius. <laughs> he's got you. It's not like a it's not a vice grip, but he's got you firmly. He's not gonna let go. <laughs> um, he's not old. He, he's human. He shaves his head in some kind of for for probably religious reasons, but uh, he's probably like thirty. Like he's not an old mm. human. And it's also odd that a human would be the like religious leader of this place, but. You know, religion's weird. <laughs> but uh quote of the day, religion's weird. <laughs> <laughs> so uh so he just follows along. He doesn't he just seems to be kind of taking in being outside. He doesn't say much. As we're walking over there, um, I wanna say to Tazu, um, I know this might be a reach, but my my brain sort of put these things together. The the note uh, that we got. It says scales to balance, and we kind of released a dragon on balance sphere. Do you think they're related? Scales the balance? Scales the balance. Um, scales the balance. Are we saying this in order? I, um, just a play on well, I guess it, it depends on It depends on when that shipment came through. Yeah. Just, I don't know, the world play was interesting. Made me think about it. It seems, it, I don't know if the timeline lines up mm -hmm. because we were in balance sphere several days ago. And who knows when that shipment was sent. Mm -hmm. so because it was coming f she said that it was coming from Oak mm -hmm. or that direction I, do I just I don't know but if the timeline lines up the shipment or, wasn't no, coming shipment, from yeah. Oak the, the, the commission was for a client in Oak but the shipment was coming from the north it was coming from Elm no from the province of Elm. Right, but it was found in the ore shipment. Yeah. The note was in the ore shipment, but oh, the ore yeah, yeah, shipment yeah. was coming from Oak, yes? Or that direction? Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Oh, it was so, coming from Oak to yeah. Genin? Yeah, it seems the like most, shipment. most shipments come from the Eastern Road because that's the one that goes to Oak, which is the nearest big place. Like, like Genin is a crossroads where there's a you know north south east west road that's the main gates and then mm. the and usually shipments come from the eastern road even if they're coming from north because they usually come from the north through oak because they could be shipped down like not a lot like the yeah, that makes sense just because of the way civilization is like it doesn't they don't usually take the northern road directly and would we know how long of a travel that is um, by by like cart, it's yeah. a while. It's it's right. uh, a, a couple weeks or more, probably. Okay. Probably yeah, probably uh, by cart, probably a month. Because a big longer. big shipment of ore would be heavy and it would take mm -hmm. a long time to take. Yeah. So yes, because the dragon encounter was a few days ago, I don't think the timeline lines up. Plus, what does it mean then? I don't know. I just thought of the words and the coincidence and thought maybe something was there. It is a coincidence, and that might be all that it is. Mm -hmm. Gotta play like four, four layer 4D four chess. Is it, yeah. is it just me throwing you a red right. or is it something? <laughs> yep. Uh, all right. It's an so interesting you, thought, though. 
you, you make your way to the uh, western gate um, where the little like shanty town for goblins is uh, <laughs> on the outside. And shanty at, town at the, for goblins. <laughs> at, at the uh, gate, Brother Lopez is again very like hesitant because this is an even bigger step outside. <laughs> um, I hold out my hand. Yeah, so he's got Julius, and now he's got Ash. <laughs> so he's like, <laughs> um, takes a big breath. You can, uh, Ash, in his hand, you can feel his heart is beating very fast. Um, it seems that going outside of places is a difficulty for him. Mm -hmm. um, so he you know, takes a deep breath and then takes small steps, but they're he's not slowing down he's just taking small direct steps to go outside the gate but he's not letting go <laughs> he's not letting go of your hands and your limbs um and then you hear the fam familiar Ch -ch 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 meshach's doing something uh there seems to be a uh, like midday meal uh afternoon meal going on uh and then she sees you and once again reaches into her robes and like rips off something to chew so she can speak common. Um, and then... Mm. Hi, Meshack. Mm. We brought me. you... We brought you a a, a new friend. He's not we good food. To. It's not what food? He's not good food. Meshack, what? he's... To he's eat him? Good. Were you gonna eat him? <laughs> <laughs> She's joking. Ha. Huh. Wait, are you guys cooking something? Because I'm kind of hungry. Oh, dear. Good God. goblin God. food. Is it? Cop, cop, cop. Would I like it? Probably not. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I'll try it. I'll, I'll they've, they've got bring, a... I'll bring uh, Brother Opez with us mm -hmm. so he can be part of the meal. Yeah, there's a uh, like cauldron boiling. Uh, seems to be some kind of food slurry of uh, water and some kind of vegetables, some kind of grain, and there seems to be a whole animal in there. Mmm. Whole animal. Mm. Yeah, you know, like you do. Like a like a stew. Yeah, yeah I was gonna say that's how you make stew. A stew with like some kind of like squirrel or something just floating in there. <laughs> mm. Squirrel stew. Like yeah. it's very obvious. Like you're like sure. looking at the animal. You just tossed it. Um, hey, they're cooking. It's boiling. Yeah. Uh, so Meshach, this is uh, Brother Olpez. Mm. Um, he's sort of a spiritual leader here in Genin. So I thought that you two might be able to talk to each other about uh what what you goblin folk would like and where you're coming from and why and just sort of get to know each other better mm. she shakes her rattle he's like elder touched mm. elder touched what does that mean mm. he, <laughs> brother opez is kind of like shocked by this but he kind of settles down to her level <laughs> Pat him on the shoulder. Yeah. Uh, yes. I. Uh, that's my calling. Hmm. They both just kind of are like taking one another in, and they are some kind of like spiritual communication. She's she ra she's rattling a lot. But when she rattles, he, he doesn't take his eyes off it. Like he stays locked onto her. And she goes, mm. he just says, where are the, the strange isn't the right word. Where the, the paired ones. He's like, mm. like, come little ones. Mm. So then like the, the kids, like they kind of come walking over and they actually, usually you see them like they're little, like toddler, like a little bit older than toddlers as far as, I mean, toddler goblins still have to be able to you know, do things. So they just like, but instead of their usual boisterous selves, 
they are very like reticent about whatever is happening here. She's like, come, come, come. So they, they come over and, and Brother Lopez is just kind of squatting and he like puts his, his hands out and like does a folding motion and then opens them back up. And they they look at him and then they like both walk over and then in unison, they put their hands up and they unfold them. And then he, he reaches out with his hands open and they, one reaches their right hand and one reaches their left hand, but at the exact same time, and they like touch him. Um, everybody make perception checks. And uh, nine. 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 Eighteen. Eighteen. Uh, Thirteen. Thirteen. Twenty-six. Twenty-six. All right, Julius and Tazu. Um, you notice that in this moment, like when they make contact, the twin goblins, it's not just their hands moving at the exact same time. You two notice that their breath is, is in unison. Uh, like every little tiny body movement is 100% paired. Like they're not, they're, they are as if they're one being. And in this moment where they have touched, everybody needs to make a will save. Oh. Ooh. Wh wisdom save? Wisdom saving throw. Old school. Well. <laughs> Natural 20. Hey. Thank you, Pete, 11. For the first 11. 20. Yeah, yeah, hey, thanks. wisdom. Yeah, wisdom. 16. 16. Six. Six. Dirty 20. All right, 16, dirty 20, and and natural 20. Uh, so Tazu and Chandri, um, you're kind of over, like your brain is kind of like overwhelmed, like for a minute, you uh, like, you just kind of like have to shake your head, like you just, like a bright light came in and you kind of dazzled. You aren't quite sure how much time has passed because you do not take in what the, uh, and what, what was yours, uh, Carter, you were 16? 16. Yeah, yeah, okay, so 16, 16 and 26. Um, you see a light kind of like uh, emanates from one of the contacts with Brother Olpez. Um And uh, uh, there, there's some kind of energy that pulsed out from there that waved over you, but you could at least like see um and you're not like losing time and then uh the same thing for you julius but the the nat 20 uh you notice there's there's a source of light that seems to be kind of consistent from where one little tiny goblin hand is touching one of brother olpez's hand and where the other goblin is touching his other there's a darkness it's not threatening it's just dark um which is bizarre to see in daytime um and that there is an interplay of shadow between them that is also its own source. And uh, there seems to be some kind of uh, supernatural energy, magic-y type of exchange happening. You can uh, uh, you can feel it, um, particularly the nat 20 means you, you're like getting to witness and feel all of it. You can feel that there is a, uh, a lot of power moving right now uh, and in this location um not necessarily a lighthouse at night but kind of like turning on a flashlight at night uh if you were going to experience power as if it was light in the dark so there is uh it is going somewhere it is going as far as like you know as far as a flashlight will go in darkness so it might not be so contained, but it's not like washing over the world or shooting up a firework necessarily, or a big one. Mm -hmm. um, and then it settles down and uh, the little ones, like they disconnect and then they just like giggle and, and run back about their ways. And that's when Tazu and Chandri, you're kind of like come to with uh, the kids just kind of like going back to the stew pot and uh, uh, Brother Olpez is weeping, and uh, Meshach's just standing there, just going, mm -hmm. It's 
Uh, I, are you I, are you okay? I think that's a complicated question at this moment. Hmm. What has happened? Uh, it's difficult to explain something that hasn't happened in a long time. Mm. Um, you know of Father Light and Mother Dark and our... Uh, these are elder powers. They, um, unlike magic that comes from uh, a place of fire or a place of ice that is tapped into and channeled and brought here, uh, the elder power is older. It's uh, not necessarily wild or chaotic. It is. It does have order, but it sort of sits behind all things. Um, the elder powers are sort of the, the parents of all others. And so light, dark shadow, as we can take them, uh, are, you know, fire comes from light, not light from fire, as you would think. Light sits behind that power, and fire, of course, also touches on chaos and brings about its own plane. But it would not exist without light. Um, Do you know why the lady would want them? He shot, said that. They what draw power happen? from the sources, these old people. Oh. Um, the old kingdoms that existed, the ones that came here and settled, uh, these ancient empires were of these folk, these people that were originated. Um, and he gestures towards Chantry, he was like, part of your lineage is of people that came from shadow as a source of power as a place. And these twins are beings that are the embodiment of this. And there's been quite some time for a convergence. The last time was a time of great change and devastation. Was but change doesn't have to be evil. Hmm? Was that the Ever War? Uh, the Ever War constantly burns. Uh, no, the battle between these forces is the Ever War. Though they don't necessarily have to be in conflict, which was what Refuge was founded upon. And however, the destruction of this world to keep it safe from the Ever War was a consequence of these convergences. These little ones, and there's probably others like them, are a representation of that on the physical plane. They burn brightly and darkly. If you were to see them elsewhere as I just did. And though they are but goblin children here, uh, they kind of transcend that, though I don't know if they ever will here or not, but they do elsewhere. I don't know if that makes sense. We all burn brightly or darkly here and elsewhere. Here they may be but candles, but elsewhere they are bonfires. And I haven't seen such a thing, nor expected to. Um, it was beautiful. Did you there was. See, yes. Were, so you're saying the elders 
Or the Elder uh, Powers. Elder Dame, Power. Dame here? Well, they are here. Well, they are always. As the House of Light and Dark represents their being and as the current worship of those powers is kind of the inheritance of that. They are gods. They do exist and they exist because of this power or the power exists because of them. It might be circular. However, uh, their presence on Ginnon has been less involved, perhaps because of what has happened before, um, of their will or of the will of refuge itself, I do not know. But these little ones, the one thing they seem to have to say was that the words they want are as like to a spoken word in hail? Not the words that they want, but that someone wants. Um, I don't know what that wisdom means, hmm. but that is what they wanted you to know. You say it again, Jared. The words they want are as like to a spoken word inhaled. Uh, I thought you said inhale like a hail. I did too. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, no, inhaled is in uh, like a breath. Got it. So would you agree that it is important to keep these children safe. We must bring them inside immediately. Um, oh. Okay. However, we need to. Um, I will. I will do my best to pr impress that upon those who need to hear it. Um. And you feel that way about all the goblins, right? Not just the twins. Oh, they are their family. They must be here, and um, especially this. Uh, this, I feel this, uh, well, you call her Meshach. She and I have much to discuss. Um, uh, yes, we must get them in as soon as we can. Um, in the meantime, I think I can uh, at least use my influence to bring in Meshach in the twins if I keep them in the house of light and dark as a place of refuge I, they cannot deny me that I can't bring them all um, maybe if Meshach seems to be in charge of them all but if there are uh, goblins here that see them as their children they seem to be not directly related to any of these folk. Hmm. So um, I can at least bring them in and Meshach if she wants to come in. And, but they'll have to stay inside the House of Light and Dark with me. That's fine. Um, yes, Zeb said he trusts your judgment. Uh, we just still need to figure out what happened with his delivery to get him and fully on board. Um, I will tell him so that will help uh, I would hope he is a very reasonable person. Yes, he said he respects your spiritual guidance very much. He is an interesting fellow, but I think with his children, or his wife and his children existing intermediate of places that he kind of understands something of what uh, I do in there. <laughs> okay. We'll let um, him know that we're, we're still going to figure out what happened to his shipment for him. That would probably be anyway. best. There are some people who um, are very much against these goblins. And while I would like to say Ginnon is a place where everybody can be and everyone is welcome because they are, some people are people and do not feel of it. Do not feel that way. Um, however, they have elected uh, our dear Carpenter as their voice, which is 
rather wise on that point, I think. So, um, Olpez, you seem to have changed. You're more confident now. I definitely want to return to my house. <laughs> However, what has just happened here? Well, maybe not to anyone else, but to me is like a miracle. Wow. Well, I'm really glad we brought you to talk to Meshach then. Mm -hmm. But I am let's, you, well. let's thank you for allowing us to take you out of your, your place of comfort. Everybody make a perception check really quick. 30, 20. 18. 30, 20, 18. 10. 10. It's fine. I got a total of 27 from a natural 20. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Your, your passive will do. If your passive is higher, you can use that because this isn't like. Great. Yeah. 20 got that. <laughs> um, Brother Olpez's beard, which before was just a like chestnut brown. It's now green. It's now. <laughs> Uh, it, it's not completely this way. There's still brown there, but it seems that a decent amount of hairs from one side to the other have some have gone darker on one side down to kind of a gray in the middle and then now a white over in his sideburn. So one cool. side over is white. One That's sideburn cool. is a very, very dark brown, almost black. <laughs> and then the beard is a mix of his regular chestnut and a gradient of dark to light. Dope. Can I roll an insight check to see if he's OCD? <laughs> um, you can roll an insight check. I don't know if you know what OCD is, and he doesn't have OCD. <laughs> he has agoraphobia. He has agoraphobia. <laughs> he has agoraphobia. <laughs> yeah. He has agoraphobia. I wanted. I wanted to say it. Uh, uh, if they knew of what such things were on Ginnon, he would have it. <laughs> Eighteen. Eighteen. Uh, his particularities do not seem to uh, be OCD. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that, that's not going to drive him insane. <laughs> <laughs> he lives in he lives in a building and worships a like belief system that's built on uh, guns. <laughs> yeah. on a pendulum, a continuum. <laughs> yeah, a spectrum. So he tells the guard. He steps back to the guards. He was like, "I am bringing these little ones." under my care to be uh, refugees and in, inside the house of light and dark, as is my right. And they go, oh, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, Meshach is going to say, I stay. They will be safe with you. But I will be I stay until all. <laughs> We're going to talk with, with people, Meshach and Get you inside. We'll get it sorted. Don't worry, Meshach. Uh, okay, so uh, he leads them back to the house of light and dark, and uh, uh, if you could, uh, or I, I will send for Zip and uh, and speak to him. He understands that. Uh, well, my way. Uh, uh, and, and you see the little, the little ones go running in and they're laughing and they're like spinning around some of the supports while also like looking up, up at the uh, the ceiling going <laughs> <laughs> and he kind of like looks at them like he's like shocked that they are also children <laughs> and they became like children and he's like oh uh, well <laughs> it's for the best it'll be, it'll be. <laughs> They can share a cot. It'll be it'll be fine. <laughs> um, uh. Bro, uh, Brother Lopez, before mm. we continue on things that we're doing, um, you said something interesting on the way back. It was it was your right to allow these two to be refugees in your. Home. Yes, here in the, here in the House of Blazing Dark. Can you please explain to me what a refugee is? Ah, 
A refugee is someone whose home has been lost to them. Uh, whether destroyed or simply unwelcome due to the way the people are or affected magically or just they are no longer welcome to be there and they must abandon mm -hmm. and being forced from your home is difficult because you want to return a refugee wants to go home, but they are looking for a place of safety and security where they can be and live while they are away. Our whole world is a such a place, a place of refuge where people can come from elsewhere and be safe until they can return home. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, some people cannot return home and their refuge becomes that by ancient right the house of light and dark as this whole world once was a house of light and dark is can invoke such ability and can bring people in on our own accord though not without its limits due to um, not being everyone's religion. Um, trying to impose your will outward can often lead to conflict. So I was very confident that these two little ones would not be opposed by anyone that I said they were safe here and allowed under my security and safety and care. Everyone else, however, if I brought them all in, that might become a situation. And so the question is, do we continue to acknowledge the ancient rites and customs or do we let them go as we have let so much else go? Yeah. Yeah. By declaring them refugees as they are, they've lost their home uh, through particularly nefarious ancient evil. They are under my care here, and then hopefully that care can extend to the rest, which I feel confident we can achieve. Well, thank you for your kindness and your will to follow us to the, to the gate. Um, huh. Well, uh, he looks back up at the constellation of the tree and looks back at you. And I think maybe it was supposed to be this way. Anyway, uh, Good luck. I think we I think we can have some success here. So with that, we're going to bring uh, this episode of Fables of Refuge to a close. Uh, and when we pick back up next week, we will continue our uh, politicizing and investigations of this goblin situation here in Guinan. Uh, all right. I uh, hope everyone is being safe out there. Uh, Thank you to our patrons, as always. If you want to jump on and check that out, there uh, were mention of some some NPCs, some fan made NPCs today that reside here in Guinan. Uh, uh, Mr. Twen is one of those. The the <laughs> Olson um, Twen. And so uh, you know Ol Olson Twen. Uh, yeah, we see you. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, so uh, thanks for watching. We're glad to be back. Uh, yes. We haven't scheduled it, but we'll probably be playing next week. And uh, so I hope your holiday season is going well. I know it's difficult out there, particularly if you're in the United States. So stay safe. Uh, we care about your well-being. And we hope that you and those closest to you who you can be safe with have a wonderful time uh, in all this stress. And we hope we maybe gave you a little like entertainment and something to get away from that. So thanks for watching. Um, and as always, remember to be kind to one another, but never forget to be kind to yourself. Bye. 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 Bye.